All right, so in this module, we'll talk about two different protocols. First is the ultra wideband UWB, and the second is JIGB. Both of these are pers uh, personal area network. Um, and um, then we will briefly talk about um, millimeter waves and, and the other activities. All right. So what is ultra wideband? Basically, if you have a signal which is sinusoidal, basically a sine sine wave, right? It will look like this in the time domain. And what will it look like in the frequency domain? An impulse. What is this diagram? This is how much power there is as a function of time. And this diagram, how much power there is as a function of frequency. So all the power in this signal is located in one frequency. Right? So when you have an impulse in the frequency domain, it's a sine wave in the time domain. Right? If you were to look at the average power over a period of time, then per cycle you can plot, it will almost look like a horizontal uh, uni uh, uniform. Anyway, let's call it uniform for the time being. But basically it is constant function. Alright, power is constant over a function of time. Now the opposite is true as well. If you have an impulse in the time domain, it will have a power which is constant in the frequency domain over all frequencies. And therefore, this will this signal will have power lab, power at very broad spectrum. I mean, it will go from zero to infinity, and um, basically the level would be very low. Though. Power level would be very low, and it will be so low that for most of the other people, it will look like noise. For most of the other receivers, it will look like noise, unless you have a receiver which receives those pulses. For the other receivers, it look like noise. So people figured it out that if we send an impulse in time domain, it will look like a noise to everybody else, but we can still communicate. So this form of a communication is called ultra wide band. Okay, so there are three words here, ultra wide band. So we know what is a band, band is a spectrum. Right? Alt and why this spectrum is basically, you know, few megahertz, maybe gigahertz, but ultra wide is multi, multi gigahertz. So you do use the spectrum all the way from zero to maybe 10 gigahertz, the whole spectrum. And the reason you can use the whole spectrum, even though it is all allocated and licensed to some other people, is because those people, the power level is so low that for them it will not really interfere. Okay, this form of communication is called UWB. Right, you send impulses in time domain, and they become a very broad spectrum in the frequency domain. Now, here is a thing to notice: is that if you look FCC, what is FCC? FCC is the Federal Communications Commission. That is the department in the United States, federal government, which regulates the whole use of the spectrum or anything that uses wireless or actually anything that uses any communication, even wired communication. So FCC controls all the telephone companies, it controls all the transmissions and everything else. It says you can use this frequency, you cannot use this frequency, you can do that. In fact, it, com it regulates Google and everybody else. If Google does something wrong or if Apple does something wrong, you go to FCC and complain. All right? So FCC has rules which say that you cannot send more than this amount, more than minus 41.3 dBm per megahertz from here to there. Okay? So that's the FCC limit. And this is called FCC part 15. Because there are many parts in that standard or that specification or that requirement, let me call it, call it law or whatever you want to call this thing, and so part 15 is simply a document number. So part 15 says that you cannot have a noise, you cannot produce interference more than 41.3 dBm per megahertz. So when you design a computer, you take it to FCC, they check it out that, yep, the, the radiation is not more than this. 
All right. Now, if you so, what happens is whenever you want to send something, you have to send it over this noise limit. Then only it will make sense. If you send under un noise limit, it will not go through. Cell phones, for example, we just saw they might send zero dBn. Right. So the cell phones would be here. And so this is the power part which is really the signal part. Signal is always more than the noise. This is the noise. So it is possible to generate very sharp pulses that have a spectrum below the noise level. And so you can get gigabits per second. So basically, by using this technology here, where you send pulses, and you can send pulses every few, like you can send 100 pulses per second or million pulses per second. You can send pulses they will have very low spectrum, very low power, but very wide spectrum, right? So with ultra wideband, you can get gigabits per second. It still keep below the noise level. By the way, this technology is all very new in the sense that it is so new that you don't still have it. So you don't have any UWB devices. Um, they are just coming in the market this year or maybe last year they must have come. And they are basically being announced every year some new devices. So. So, so if you hear of something called USB, um, wireless USB, all right, that is UWB, all right, wireless USB devices will give you 480 megabits per second. 480 megabit is the rate of the wired USB. Huh? Yeah, 2.0, USB 2.0 has 480 megabits, yeah not USB 1.1. USB 2.0 has 40 megabits, but there is a wireless version of it which is coming now where you don't have to communicate, so then you can use it for communication with this. Right now when you use this, you have to use USB 2.0 because it's fast enough for disk. You will be able to do wireless disk then. Right now many of you, most of you don't have wireless disk. If you have wireless disk, it's probably using 11. And 11 doesn't go 40 megabits. It only goes to 54 or with 11 and 200 megabits. But it's really faster than with USB, UB, UWB. So you can get multiple multi gigabits using 10 gigahertz spectrum. And FCC approved UWB operation in 2002. So before 2002, it was illegal to do this kind of stuff. Even though you were below the noise level, but it was illegal. But now it is allowed. And so it will be used by high speed over short distance, like wireless USB. UWB can see through the trees, underground, radar. And so another, there are other applications of UWB, by the way, other than communication. Why? Because these impulses can do some other things. They can see through the trees. They can go through the walls. And um, they can go through the ground. They can go through the earth. And so they can be used as a radar to find out things behind the wall, in the ground, behind the trees. So, For example, in the museums where they keep very valuable stuff in the open, they might have a UWB detector which is detecting the position of the diamond continuously. If anybody moves the diamond by one millimeter, they will, the detector will find out that the diamond has been moved. So that is the radar application. So, so there are applications like that for UWB, position tracking, and high value assets and all that. So that is not what we will be discussing here, but there are other applications. Another application of UWB that we have been discussing but haven't done it is that, you know, you can use UWB to do uh, to look inside the stomach, inside the body, and um, so medical applications. Then there are medical applications to find out you know what is wrong what is happening you know to take picture inside the body all right so uwb has many applications we will talk only the networking applications here and so basically what you do is when you say pulses the pulses look like this so they do have an amplitude they do have a position so you see this pulse is different from and these pulses are all different because their position is different slightly. And their phase, they also have a phase. So this one is a 180 degree phase from that one. You see this one is a big and a small, this is a big and a small like that, negative. So they have, they have position, they have a phase, uh, and they have amplitude. So basically, 
these pulses are very small. The smaller they are, the wider the spectrum it is. So this is could be 25 to 400 picosecond, not nanosecond, picosecond. Pico is 10 to minus 15, right? Um, nano is 9, 10 to minus 9. Nano is pico 15 or 12. 15, okay. So, so that is um, that is the width. Um, and they can be position, amplitude, or polarity modulated. What that means is that this position could indicate a zero, this could indicate a one, or this could indicate a zero, this polarity, and this could indicate a one. So, depending upon what polarity it is, you could say zero or one. And since these po these are so many picosecond, which is actually it's a thousandth of a pico nanosecond is a picosecond, right? Because 400 picosecond is like so. This would be nanosecond is. Okay, because nano is 10 to the minus 9, right? Yes. Micro is 10 to the minus 6. So it is 10 to the minus 12. Sorry. Yeah, so basically, this is a 0.25 nanosecond is 215 picosecond, right? So that would give you 4 billion pulses per second. So that is, um, you can calculate how many megabits per second that is. Um, and so then what happened was once the FCC allowed that you can use UWB. The industry started making groups, and two groups were formed, just like Wi-Fi and Wi-Max. Two groups were formed. One was called BSUWB, another one was called MVOFDM. And um, and we are going to discuss that in a minute. But basically, so one group said that we will use this spectrum, which was allocated by FCC now for UWB using this technology called DSUWB um, and that is coming up in this slide but we will go back here um, and the other one came up that we will use this other technique all right before we go to those two groups let's just uh, review the UWB advantages first so it has very low energy so it gives you a lot of watts very few watts per megabit um, it has line of sight is not required because it goes to the walls. Sub centimeter resolution, and um, so you can see if something moves by a millimeter, it will figure it out. Um, pulse width is much smaller than the path delay, so easy to resolve multi path. So what happens is remember the multi path. When I send one impulse, it becomes four pulses because it is reflected four ways. But because the pulses are so small, they don't. Basically, in the, what happens is you can really dis, you can distinguish them each other as compared to if the pulses were big, where they were just running into each other. You see, this like thin people and thick people cartoon if you remember. So the pulses are very thin, and even if they become multiple copies, the problems are less uh, as compared to if they become thick people. All right, so you can resolve multipath. Difficult to intercept, so you cannot just stop a UWB communication because you have to really affect the whole band. And this is all digital logic, so the low cost chips and the size is very small and so on and so forth. Anyway, so so UWB is is good and that's why there are so many groups which want to use it. And the first group is DSUWB. And um, so this is a purest group. What they wanted to do was, they wanted to use um, CDMA multiple chips per bit. So what they want to do is, for each bit, they will send 10 bits, and that is what we call chips. So this is CDMA, if you remember direct sequence, right? There were two kinds of uh, CDMA, the direct sequence and the frequency hopping. So this is the direct sequence stuff. And then they will do the UWB using pulses. So this is DSUWB, and so when the the FCC allocated the spectrum, they divided that into two bands, 3.1 to 4.85, and 6.2 to 9.7, and so they started using this um, into two different bands. And one of the, so the FCC made only two requirements. One requirement was that you keep into this band. Second requirement is that obviously your level has to be below that part 15 limit, minus 43 dBm, whatever, per hertz. 
and the third requirement was that you have to use minimum of 500 megahertz all right then only they will call it ultra wideband if you use less than 500 megahertz then that is not ultra wideband all right so even though the spectrum is more than 500 megahertz you can divide that into 500 megahertz pieces and as long as you use one piece that's good enough right so this group divided that into two bands and then they said well we will use the whole spectrum uh, or some part of the spectrum and then we will use filter to meet different countries requirement so each country so the problem is the each country has some band that they want to protect so that is the band they say well you cannot do uwb here right that's why here for example we have two bands 4.85 and then 6.29 to 9.7 there is something between 4.85 and 6.29 that they want to protect all right so other countries have other things right so so basically they can use spectral shaping to to meet uh, different countries requirement as to where they put the their 500 megahertz the other one is multiband OFDM. Now these guys, they are basically what they said was that look, FCC doesn't say how you do it, so we don't really have to use UWB. We just have to use 500 megahertz. If somebody gave me 500 megahertz, then I have better ways of using 500 megahertz, and that way is OFDM. So these people started using OFDM, the standard OFDM that we have used in A2.11a, 11g, remember OFDM? Same OFDM they are using over 500 megahertz at a very low power. And it turns out they are winning. So these are people who, so this is not really real o UWB except in the FCC sense. In the FCC sense it is UWB because it uses wide spectrum but it is not from the original definition of uwb which was that if you send pulses it distributes the energy right so it doesn't do pulses it uses the normal ofdm so what they have done is they have divided the whole spectrum into 14 or so let's see divided 3.1 to 10 point megahertz into 14 times 528 megahertz band so that meets the FCC limit and now you can use um, one two three of these bands simple devices support three lowest bands and uh, spectrum flexibility for international use more for the band and so on and so forth so basically you can use them um, so in different countries different bands and each band has 128 subcarriers so remember OFDM has multiple subcarriers is multi-carrier communication so use 128 carriers and then you can disable some subcarriers if if somebody wants you to not touch some part of the spectrum if that part of the spectrum happens to be in the middle of a band you just don't use those carriers so so this is a, another whole group which is designing high speed devices using this FCC allocation all right that will finish our lecture today um, so to summarize this whole thing what we have done in this part is that UWB allows you to use a lot of spectrum at very low power right below the noise level to do the communication very high speed communication so when the FCC allowed this in 2002 two groups were formed one did this pulse based stuff and the other is doing OFDM using the same spectrum